And that conversation is rife. It's necessary that we have it, especially after the BBC Africa Eye expose yesterday that got Africans talking. Uh, when it comes to sexual abuse, especially in the universities, it's something that people have complained about over the years. I personally have received a lot of DMs from girls who have asked that we add our voice uh, to the campaign so that some of them can finally graduate and also ward off these predators on campus. Unfortunately, it looks like attention wasn't paid as much as expected until yesterday and now there's an expose that has in a way incriminated some lecturers in the country there are a few people who are against um, you know this investigative piece because for them it puts Ghana in a bad light internationally and so it makes it very difficult for people who carry degrees from uh, you know Ghanaian universities to easily find schools in your or on the international market and so today I have students from University of Ghana and also we've been joined again by lawyer Roxin he was earlier on for the newspaper review uh, with Johnny Hughes and he's back um, on it. So thank you so much for staying and agreeing to do this with us. We're very grateful. Thank and also in the, stu in the studio, I have Samson Tagbor. Um, I have Judith Awoche, um, Tando, Isaac Amponsa, Priscilla Anan Ponsa, Priscilla Asantua Aye, and Bannon Clinton Bafo. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. And so you are all students. Clearly, I'm sure that you're not surprised by this expose, are you? Mm, no. You're not? Ladies, I'd want you to speak first because oh, you. Really? I mean, this is affecting an issue that has affected ladies over the years. Yeah. Are you aware of it? Are you? Have you been a victim before? Uh, I personally haven't been a victim. Okay, but I am aware of this. You are aware. What exactly gone. were you aware of? Oh, you you hear stories from students like. Uh, for that you cannot <laughs> I cannot. No, say. I mean, as long as you're not I'm, mentioning names, it's fine. Can you at least tell us? Give us a vivid experience of someone who told you a story. Uh, for me, I heard of a story, mm -hmm. but for the story I heard of, I do not think that it's solely to uh, the blame solely goes to one person. No problem. I we feel still that to hear. It. Yes. So I should, men I should you no, don't mention names. That's what I'm saying. That don't <laughs> mention names. But okay. what did you hear on campus? On oh wow. Okay, so uh, I heard of a lady who, she actually wanted questions. Okay. And so she tried to... Seduce uh, a lecturer? Sort of. She okay. went to a lecturer okay. for questions, mm -hmm. but the lecturer would want this in return, and you know what I'm talking about. So that's, that's the general thingy, and he would fail her if she doesn't... Uh, give him Agreed. what he wants okay, to his demands yes so did she give in uh eventually she graduated i don't know whether she, she did. graduated <laughs> so maybe she did or maybe she decided to study exactly but i mean it, it's totally wrong for you to even want to go to a lecture for questions you have That's, a whole semester um to attend <laughs> classes and to study what about you sweetheart any experiences that you know of um, no please but Hmm, why do I have a feeling that you are all <laughs> hiding? Should I go to the men? Maybe they'll be bold enough to tell us the stories. And these are some of the problems that we're facing because it looks like everybody is afraid to be victimized. And so they would rather not speak. Clinton, do you have a story to share? Uh, even if I have a story to share, the men are not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> the men are not complaining. Okay. But do you have female friends yeah, who have I, told I, you? I, I, I have a lot of female friends and they, they've... They've, they've shared experiences and they've told me what they've experienced okay. for some time. I think there was one um, who who had agreed that she thinks she wasn't okay with it. Okay. And that she had to approach a lecturer to discuss it. And definitely, it has always been the case that a lecturer would ask for something from the lady, but she feels she doesn't, she won't give in. So the grade remained the same. Okay. And, um, other, there are other issues as such, not only in the University of Ghana, but then I have friends mm. across other universities who keep addressing me with such issues because of the relationships I do have with them. And I think it's one of the major problems that needs to be addressed because for you to be denied, agreed, um, because you definitely didn't give in to a lecture or something, it's, 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 a, it's a very sad issue and it's very disheartening as well. Something, I'm coming to you. <laughs> because you are part of the students council right well, or the I, students board 
Well, I've, I've worked closely with uh, mm. student representative. I'm a former as a PRO, but okay. currently I, I'm not part of the current executives. No problem. But are you all aware of the sexual harassment policy that was put out by the University of Ghana yeah. in 2017? Are you all privy to the document? Well, yeah. Okay. Can you, so, you school me a bit on it? Yeah. Uh, well, Bella, I think that we are discussing a very sensitive issue mm. this morning. And uh, just as the way the previous colleagues stated it um we have heard of these issues in the media some mm. friends will also call and complain to you and all of that but the other aspect is that the university of ghana and i want to believe that other investors also have uh, anti sexual harassment policies mm -hmm. you have mentioned that if we are aware of such a policy of course we do and in that policy the university consciously uh, put out what we are supposed to do in circumstances such as this yeah what it means is that we do not want to take individuals opinion no matter mm -hmm. how plausible it will be mm -hmm. to the level of the law and what ought to be done under certain circumstances so the university consciously stipulated what should be done under certain circumstances regarding uh, mm -hmm. sexual harassment and all of that mm -hmm. it's it's interesting to note that the university council has a role in that policy that 23 page policy to implement the anti-sexual harassment policy to its fullest mm. and the chief disciplinary officer who is the vice chancellor yeah is also entitled to uh you know ensure that the university uh, attend to issues regarding anti-sexual uh, harassment mm -hmm. issues and all of that the other issue is that we have a full department sigensa mm -hmm. a center for gender studies and advocacy yeah that that is working closely with this committee now bella I am not speaking on behalf of the university, and I am not speaking on behalf of any character or lecture that is in, uh, cited in this mm -hmm. issue. But we are talking about the issue in its entirety or its generality. We are saying that if you have the opportunity or if you have any issue regarding sexual harassment, and there is a laid down procedure, which is the opportunity given you to follow, and that opportunity at the end of the day, uh, you know, talks about certain sanctions to be carried out if mm -hmm. investigations prove that indeed these allegations yeah, are, are, are true or not. And you decided not to follow them. But instead, we have been asked to rely on uh, some, uh, you know, expose of a sort mm -hmm. and make conclusions. Then I think it's worrying. Is victimization not a reason why a lot of people have decided not to speak? Secondly, what are the reporting lines at the University of Ghana? Let's say a lady or a man has been sexually harassed or abused. Who do you go and report to? And usually when you report, do you get the you know, response that you would expect? Well, Bella, Bella, Bella before, before my, my, my colleague comes in, let me put this, this straight. That you see, the reporting lines are very clear. For everybody to assume or presume for people who are victims of these circumstances that if they go ahead to report they'll be victimized for me i think it's, it's, it's a bit worrying and it lacks the question because you have to take the step first and foremost so that when you are victimized then you have an element of discussion on this particular issue for what i know uh, it has not been the case that anybody has reported such uh, issues to the authorities that are mentioned in that policy and they have been victimized but that's because any. you are not aware you think that, well, no, you think that people record. have not gone to report sexual abuse? Well, Bella, we don't have that on record. We don't have it on record, so we cannot speak off record. We can only speak to issues, of course. At this discussion, we cannot conjecture mm. what is and what is not. Yeah. We can only speak relative to the issues that are verifiable. Okay. And what I'm saying is that I have not heard or seen in any report that Akosia Mansa has reported this lecture to the authorities uh, under the anti-sexual harassment policy mm -hmm. and the person has been victimized and all of that. I've not heard him okay. and I've not seen him. So okay. what I'm speaking to is that if you have the opportunity, and for me at the University of Ghana, I think the environment is very friendly, that even if you don't have the courage to go to these authorities and complain formally to them, you have a lecturer or other lecturers who are uh, more friendly and you know closer to you that you can even mm. report when they might even end up showing you the way forward okay i'll come back to that but quickly before i come to lawyer roxin i know you wanted to say something isaac um actually uh, this is a very dicey issue okay and taking into consideration the several interest bodies that are involved you have we have to be very careful with our statements and what have you mm. i mean talking about the uh, the sexual harassment uh, policy 
every university, at least most universities, have that have particular policy. policy in place. Yeah. UDS has it, UCC has it, and uh, several universities have it. So, I mean, per my, my, my discretion and per what I've read from um, the university's policy on uh, mm. harassment, it clearly stipulates a, fo a formal process which when a student is what victimized or suffers that particular set of uh, treatment can go and seek redress mm. and even so we have an uh, informal procedure okay that is laid down where students can even go and have a discussion informal and settle that particular argument and if it's not even talking of that even though so-called well-established universities out there they all have uh, was in the issues of what sexual harassment yes. popping up here and there. Mm. Let me just uh, read to you back to history. Mm. Uh, talking about John B. Waxon, who is a popular person within uh, the world of psychology, was involved in several sexual harassment with his students. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a new this is a story that is uh, trending, dating back to even before University of Ghana was even established. Okay, I get to be so. I think and I believe that the University of Ghana my own uh, study and analysis of issues is really doing well in that regard but this this is just hearsay it's, we can't you think it's hearsay you yes. don't think that's okay you don't think the expose is conclusive <laughs> Let me, you don't think it's conclusive no, it's, it's it's just i think even so uh, the the title sex for great is very deceptive okay i get it because are you it saying is, that something like that doesn't exist on campus though it might exist mm -hmm do it might exist but we need concrete evidence to back it yes i know it all exists right. but it we have we need concrete evidence to back it all right lawyer oxen the students here um seem to be quite adamant in telling us exactly what's happening maybe truly uh there is a step and a procedure as to how students should report and all of that but first of all this expose that they, they say is not conclusive are you also of the same view not at all okay I, I've been in student leadership. Mm. I, I left university in, in 2000, yeah. millennium graduate, <laughs> and I went back and completed in 2007 for okay. my LLB. Um, as far back as 98, you know, and that is, I, I can say it's modern times. Mm. These issues read their ugly heads in our universities. Were there in the University of Cape Coast? Mm. The trend then was that there were some female socialites who would travel to London and uh, only return to school when semester reopens, mm -hmm. and they would come in just after about about a month to exams. We must have done several IAs towards yeah. your continuous assessment, 40%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were not bothered. They, they were not going to lectures. They would go to the computer room. Okay. You know, the computer room was, well, they, it was manned by yeah. young yeah. computer yeah. science mm. student, uh, graduates those days. And they would seek favors. Okay. So when we were in school, when we were, were student leaders, this were how the reports, how the gossip went. But when we got to the final year in 99, 2000, mm -hmm. um, I think a lecturer got involved. And um, eventually, I think that lecturer had to be removed. I think we, we, we demonstrated that he had to be removed. But the point I'm trying to drive at is that it's become endemic, mm -hmm. not just in our universities, other tertiary institutions, workplaces. Ask young female graduates who have completed national service or who simply want national service postings yeah. to exotic places ask them what they go to. Mm. When I was in private practice, some of these matters came before me, some even threatened to sue and all that. Mm. But they were not emotionally capable of withstanding or going through the rigors of trial. Yeah. So sometimes you are you are want to advise them to seek psychological help. Okay. 
if they were of that fortitude to fight the matter, they could return. They, they never came back. Young graduates who finish national service seek employment, find out. Hmm. All right? Okay. In churches. It's happening. It's happening. So, it, 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 these are social deviants. So they have they are found in almost every subsector of the economy. Hmm. They're everywhere. Yeah. And um, I I made a I made a point this morning earlier yeah. that uh, a gifty auntie uh, Nana Nana Zakwa's okay. wife. Yeah. She did a program some time ago. She titled it "Sex for Great, uh, and great for Jobs" and "Sex for Jobs." Mm. We didn't pay attention to her. We are only linking, we are only connecting the dots as, as a result of the emergence of this documentary. Is it because in this documentary there seems to be some level of evidence against certain people? It, as against the aunties? You see, yeah. as a practitioner, we, we lay emphasis on evidence, evidence, evidence. Mm -hmm. So I can understand the perspective from where. Is it Anam? Yes. Yeah. Isaac. Isaac. Anampansa. Oh, Anampansa. Okay. Yeah. I can understand his perspective to the matter. Mm. But section 51 of the evidence decree will tell you, and uh, uh, at 323, three, will tell you that it is immaterial mm -hmm. how the evidence is obtained. Once it is relevant to the matter, it will be admitted by a court of law. Okay. The duty of the court will be to to place the probative value on on the, the evidence before provided. it and oh. come to a certain determination of the matter. Okay. So, if you cry wolf that, yes, um, I, I don't like how the evidence was gathered and maybe I was entrapped. Mm -hmm. um, the video recording was done without my, my, my knowing so. I was, all that is immaterial to the court. Mm. Once there's some form of evidence to deal with for the court to make a determination on it the court will look at it and come to that determination okay so and that's a sacrosanct principle in law all right now what what do we speak of we speak of issues that or an issue that has become endemic in the universities mm -hmm. as a result of sheer numbers mm -hmm. of student population Look, believe you me, some students really are not steady. True. Even the male ones. True. From where I sit, we have evidence that there are, there are male students who are now prostitutes on campus. Mm. <laughs> it is clearly what she said, that a friend of hers went to ask, or someone she knew went to ask for questions. Uh, clearly, that showed that the person wasn't ready to study. I am speaking. I am speaking of even gays, men, young men who enter the universities. They are not working. Mm. They are not studying. Mm. They are partners outside. Okay. So they go and make money and come and pay lectures. So this is not only an issue about sex it, it, for it grades, so but is, maybe even gifts. Yes. For grades and, and all so, that. So and I'll come to that. So when you, for instance, when I got to the university final year two thousand, some went to abroad, vacation work. They won't come back. When they come, they bring perfume. And that time, mobile phone was now emerging. Mm. You 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 couldn't even buy the cheap. To put in the mom cheap was as expensive as 250 yeah equivalent now as at that time so what people did was to hang the mobile phone around their neck like this to show that they have they a have mobile. They come from london <laughs> they have a mobile phone but there's no line yeah and and the light will be blinking in the evenings these were things they gave to lecturers mm. they fancied it and that would give them, um, you know, the results that they yes, wanted. People were able to change their grades. Hmm. We had, so I speak of twenty years ago. You, you understand my yeah. point? And and it, and and these things happened even before twenty years ago. And it's gotten worse over it's time. It's getting worse. Mm. That is why people are becoming scandalized. Yeah. The sheer proportion. Mm. All right. right. 
this law school matters. Is also some of the undercurrents and some of these complaints. True, true. Yeah. Lawyer, before you even carry on, let me come back to the students and ask. So, what is the atmosphere like on campus? Because there seems to be a divided front. Some people believe that this was totally wrong on the part of BBC to come down to Africa and shed a bad light on our university education. Other people think that it was great that they came because people have been complaining for a long time and nobody was paying attention to it. Which side are you on and what do you think? Okay, okay Isaac. All right. Um, and you can all contribute. I don't like how you're all quiet. It looks like everybody's um, afraid to say something. Don't be. Yeah, but Isaac. Bella, actually, you know, um, the whole expose that came out, I mean, is a good thing. That it's they, good. Yes, they, they've exposed some certain things. Suppose expose some certain things. Okay. But they come in as a foreign entity to, I mean, carry out this documentary is what I have a problem on does the it, issue. Does it matter who carries out the investigation? You know... Should we not be more concerned you know, about um, the information that they are putting yes, out? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm not discounting... The, 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 the cracks or the content of the information uh -huh. is great. This is what has been happening. Yeah. I get to make it. it is a fact on the ground that it has been happening. But no one had has courage to be able to confront the issues. Reason why someone came in to do you it. Th yes, that's okay. true. That's true. But the fact is that even within uh what's the name? What the Western world mm. we have those happenings around. I get to make okay. are you telling me that the media houses within uh, Ghana here are not competent enough to carry out this exposition. So you all would have preferred that a local media all house... All the structures within the university are not equipped enough to at least carry out this particular exposition mm. or sort of investigation. Okay. You know, we should look at it from uh, a point that is uh, objective. That is where we can really appreciate it. I mean, whatever all of us are discussing here has truth in it but we have to study the whole thing systematically mm. and object and make an informed uh, conversation around it okay okay you want to say something yes Bella, I think i'll come back to you i think that uh, the university of ghana itself mm -hmm. is promoting uh, a policy to address this issue and i think that the university of ghana is is more interested in protecting the female students or victims of this uh, issues and happenings. That is why in their wisdom, they have even enacted laws and policies to cater for some of these things. Okay. So it is now left for victims to report these issues. To because who? To the authorities that are mentioned. Who exactly? So tell so me where we start from. So you can go to the Sigensa and make a formal complaint. You can even go and report to your course advisor. And you are telling me that as it stands now, there are no records of any complaints from students at Sigensa? Yes, of course. Saying? Sigensa not even not one? Published. Not even one Sigensa report. have not published that indeed in the year 2015, 14 or 13 or this year, this student reported okay. lecture A or B to have done this and that and that. So I am saying that we have institutions that are set out to take care of some of these things. And we cannot uh, bypass these institutions uh, to go and do our own thing. If you do that, what it means is that we are only bastardizing our institutions. Okay. We will not allow them to work. And anybody who suffers some of these things will not have the courage to come forward and report to even the laid down procedures to, to take further action. So we are saying that the University of Ghana is not against uh, you know, any expose or, or what have you. But the truth is that I know, as a student, I know that there is a anti-sexual harassment policy. And mm. if I suffer a victim, I'm then going to report to the report authorities to therein so that actions will be taken. I hope that students now know, especially for those who don't know. Before I even come to Crystal, a quick one, lawyer. Yeah. So, um, in this case where, you know, Professor Jampo has said that he's going to file a lawsuit against uh, the BBC, you mentioned earlier that you didn't think he should have spoken on the issue, but he did. Does that in any way um, have an effect on the possible outcome of this lawsuit in terms of him eventually winning um, the suit against BBC? Uh, you, you, you see, the, the fact that you proceed to court mm. doesn't mean you win. Yeah. Okay. Now, I made the point that if I were him mm. or if I were close to him, this matter began to fill time from about Saturday yeah. morning. And initially it was about some West African universities. Then by Sunday morning, they are zeroed in on University of, University of Ghana. And by Sunday evening, his name and name of one other 
yeah. uh, lecturer had popped up. Co yeah. So if I were him, I would have procured the services of a lawyer or two mm. to advise my position. Okay. You don't go to town on these matters, particularly when we, we were then here to see the contents of the said video. Okay. Just for the lawyers to advise your position. Then, then, then you stay back. Let the video be played out. And let how the public receives the evidence. Then you can couch your, your responses accordingly. But, but like, like before, he simply went to time, he became garrulous, mm. speaking discordantly to the issue. In, in, in one of his submissions, he said, no, he, there was only one time that he met the lady. But in the video, there was another instance that they met at the Kramon. You, you understand mm. me? So, then it means the things you were saying, vis-a-vis -vis the contents of the evidence available now. Okay. We that you. Okay. You know. Okay. But I want to disagree with my two brothers. Mm. <laughs> this mm. business of let the victims come to report. We know. Even you in the studios, you are most unwilling to speak freely. Yeah. For... Because of your peculiar circumstances, you don't know what you say. Mm -hmm. That will, that will Go create problems you. for you yeah. in your departments and faculties back in school. And so it, it's, it's the same. People, I, I just told you that some persons, ladies came to me to look at the possibility of suing. Yeah. Even though they were crying, they were, they were emotionally distraught. Mm. And these are not persons you can put on the evidence, evidence stand to testify. Yeah. They will crack and the cross examination. They they'll be they'll be badly exposed. So unless the persons have the emotional temperament to be. go through the rigor. Yeah. Even the reporting, because procedure is provided in the policy. Yeah. As to how the hearing will go. It's a typical hearing process. It has to go because they will have to testify, their testimonies will have to be interrogated. Mm. Are they capable? Do they have the emotional have. stability to do that? Okay. A lot of them don't. So That's now this, this issue has given people the opportunity to ventilate. The opinion has come. Some as old as 50 years, they are now talking. I just somebody just forwarded. Somebody is recounting her story in 1992. The same investor of Ghana. So that means that it's not easy. It's not easy to speak on that issue. Let me let Crystal quick, quickly some read even some said messages. that they were raped in some of the offices. Right. Hmm. You know, okay. and so, but there is no time bar to crime. Exactly. So I am saying that if some in some jurisdictions, I'm sure Prof would have been invited to at least give a statement by now. Mm. In some serious jurisdictions. But that doesn't. Well, hasn't and been you know done. why? The other the other professor, I don't, I've even forgotten his name. Butako. 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 He hasn't okay. spoken. Well, he denied mm -hmm. because the BBC said that he's denied allegations. Yes, but he hasn't spoken. No, so we're all hasn't. talking about right. jumpo, jumpo, jumpo. Let, let Christoph read <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of the comments that are coming <laughs> through uh, WhatsApp. Uh, this friend, um, Kwesi, he says, I will not forgive any teacher in any JHS or SHS who will try that sex for grace with any girl from my family. From Dr. Abedi Kwadaso, uh, a.k.a. Police Ni. Hey, that's a long one. He says, good morning, champion host. These sex for grades happen everywhere. Why were the BBC selective? Is it a planned thing to destroy the reputation of some selected lecturers? Or because even in Ghana, almost all the tertiary, tertiary institutions, these things have become uh, the order of the day. Hmm, God save Ghana. Hi to Reverend Samuel K. Mensa from, okay. Uh... Yeah, and the other one says, students been crying out loud about this uh, harassment, but every authority turns a deaf ear to them. It took outsiders to make investigations before we're all listening now. We're all listening now. You would prefer we all keep quiet and ignore so that uh, the bad lecturers keep producing fake doctors by sex or whack administrators when then we later blame politicians alone. Lock the door and off the lights and kiss me. Hey, and then she laughs. <laughs> My project uh, coordinator... Um, gave us work marks because of his personal beef with my project supervisor. All those under that supervisor got work marks and we, uh, we complained and went to the dean and all authorities, but nothing was done. I guess it would have been different if BBC rather complained. From Pajo of Big Joe Shoes near Quadraso Onion Market, I'm very happy that the narration has changed today. A shoddy work from BBC. They were not wise at all. The lady is not University of Ghana students. There was no sex act. But I'm not surprised how Sunyani nurses hail President Kufuado or on their Alawa issue, Alawa issue.
you. Um, hi to Mame Soja of um, Kwadaso. Well, okay. okay. Um, good morning, Johnny, on the issue of sex for grades. The UDS WA campus is the worst culprit. Mr. Bernard Bewa, a lecturer of the School of Business and Law, lured and locked a lady in his apartment. Attempted to rape her, but wasn't successful because the lady screamed to the hearing of neighbors. Wow. He then threatened to fail her, and in his own words, do you think you are better than those I've had my way with others even pray and beg for him to sleep with them in exchange for grades wow uh, last one for today hi bella i'm enjoying the show this issue is very serious even if you are intelligent you won't get good grades unless you have sex with them if you have dignity you fail because you didn't give them what they want jasmine from ie all right thank you so mm. much crystal this is all time will allow um and so i'd like to say thank you to lawyer roxin thank you so much for your insights and students thank you for coming as well you are now looking at me no, when no, i gave you the opportunity no, to speak no, all of you were, you were holding back. I'm sorry, but yeah, we'll have to wrap up on this segment.